so in between working on the Game Boy Mega Machine, which as you can see I'm actually starting on the next uh, kind of case above it, as well as a few other projects that are like ongoing, including this one that's coming up pretty soon. It's gonna be pretty funky. Look at that, look at that beauty. So let's start from the start. About six months ago I was trawling through eBay. I've got a few saved sellers. They're like those, um, what are they called? Like clearance warehouses where they like clear out like loads of universities and stuff and then um, put the uh, like equipment up for quite a high amount of money. Well this ominous box was actually sitting on one of those kind of like eBay sellers and you know it's been sat in my watch list for like six months. Nobody's bought it and it's slowly going down in money. Ooh. And I completely forgot about it. And the other day when I was designing something on the Game Boy Mega Machine I found I found it really hard with the um, voltmeter that I had in my multimeter. It kept on, you know, falling down. I couldn't see it. And I was like, you know what? I really want a nice desktop voltmeter. Uh, you know, I could go for a modern one with loads of functions and probably not just a voltmeter, but you know, something like a decent actual, actual usable oscilloscope or something, but whatever. That's not what I'm about. So I went on eBay and I typed in voltmeter and this came up first. And I was like, yeah, I remember that. And I remembered I fired over an offer, uh, quite a low one, uh, and they didn't take it obviously about six months ago. So this time swiped in, fired over exactly the same offer and annoyingly they took it they didn't even do a counter offer and i was like damn it i should have gone lower i should have gone lower i mean it's in perfect working order but it was it was 60 pounds i know it's quite a lot for um an old voltmeter so i felt i needed to make a little video about it to feel less guilty for spending 60 pounds on a mid 1960s voltmeter that only does metering of volts. However, 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 I must add that this is not just a voltmeter, it's not just any voltmeter, no, 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 this has got quite a cool display. And if you know anything about snazzy cool retro displays, you'll obviously know about the Nixie tube. Yes, this is a Nixie voltmeter. I don't profess to know a lot about Nixie tubes. I know a bit about VFD tubes and there's a, a couple of projects that actually coming up with these things. But uh, Nixie tubes are a bit of a mystery to me. All I know is they need a lot of voltage and they're lovely and orange and beautiful and in, in a lovely vacuum tube. Mm. So I, I don't really have a clue what's going on. So I'm gonna talk about it in a very uh, poetic way and yeah, hope I get by. <laughs> So yeah, this is the Solatron Digital Vault Meter 1420.2. What a beautiful name. And funnily enough, uh, when I was looking at it on eBay, it looked like that big on the picture. I thought it was only a miniature one and I had a space kind of like planned for it. And it turns up in a big box and I'm like, oh no. I think I may have bought something a lot bigger. I don't know what it is about test equipment. Like even some of the Brawl and Cure stuff. It looks like it's gonna be that big. And then it turns up and it's massive. Like, this is huge! It's proper heavy. It's gonna have some hefty um, transformers in there and stuff like that. Anyway, without further ado, let's turn it on. So the burning embers of the wire inside the Nixie tube is shaped like numbers and it just looks absolutely awesome as the uh, orangeness is oranging off the wires. <laughs> I have a feeling this input is actually uh, some sort of custom thing replaced, uh, replacing a plug, I'm not sure. This should be about 19 volts, so... Oh yeah, nice. I don't really need accurate kind of readings, I just need a rough ballpark figure, so I figured this is nice and it looks cool, so why the heck not? Let's plug up this mode grandmother, which is one volt per octave, which means every octave it goes up is uh, a volt, and just see how out of uh, calibration or whatever this... Uh wonderful solar tron uh, really is. So I've got a wire plugged into the keyboard out, which is one volt per octave. So when you hit C, it's at zero. As you can see, it's just uh, flicking around like 0 0.03 volts. So hopefully when I hit the next C up, which is an octave up, this will go to about one volts. So not only is it like nice and working, it's uh, calibrated, uh, which I'm thankful for because I haven't got a clue how to calibrate 
this Solartron Digital Vault Meter LM1420.2. Now, I think the best thing to do is actually see what's inside because, you know, everything you own, even this, I've taken that apart in for a video. Yeah, you should check it out, but you know, maybe that's some bad advice because you may break things, but you know, that's a risk I'm willing to take. Okay, let's do this. First things first, the last thing I wanna happen is uh, whatever I take apart, something shorts on this lovely metal table, so. Okay, right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it off and um, open the enclosure. Ooh, bye-bye, Nixie tubes. Oh, it smells like an old guitar amp. I think these screws may be the culprits for the uh, case. Oh yeah, I'm excited. Time to look at some retro electronics that I really am not sure how it functions. Okay. Oh, oh, it is that. Okay, first time lucky. Awesome. Trying not to uh, electrocute myself. Oh, the dust is, the dust is. Wow, that's dusty. Oh yeah, that is cool. The first thing I'm gonna do before I go rooting around is uh, discharge these capacitors as that one looks awfully scary. Remember, if you're gonna be dealing with high voltage, always keep your arm behind your back because it won't go through your heart. Even though, you know, don't listen to me, I don't really know what I'm talking about. <gasps> so we've got the screen, and it looks like every single one of the Nixie tubes has two boards. Uh, the plus and minus one, which is actually there, I think I have a sneaky suspicion that that might actually be controlled by a relay because I was hearing relays when it was changing. I don't know where the relays are. Is that a relay? Look, that looks like a relay back there. But, you know, you can see it's pretty nice. There's the power supply, nice old school diodes on there and some really pretty uh, pretty shiny things that I must profess I don't really know. Look at that wire loom going down the bottom. Do not raise board when power is on. Okay, thankfully the power's off. Okay, so it looks like there's actually an axle on the back. You can see the spring-loaded thing. It looks like there's um, an axle. There's two screws here. I think we need to open these and hopefully the whole Nixie board actually lifts lifts up. Oh, oh, they're like spring-loaded screws. So let's flick the spring-loaded screws. <gasps> there we go. Oh yeah. On the side here, you see the back of the Nixie tubes. Anyway, what I think we should do is hopefully this should, aha, how cool is that? So you can get to all of the electronics. As you can see, each of these uh, Nixie tube boards has a massive multi-core wire. If you look down there, there's just a humongous loom of white wires. That is just insane. And it's most of it looks like it's connecting to this multi-core um, connector at the back, which is unlabeled. A lot of this test equipment is just mad. Because so many random like connectors that you've never seen before that probably connect to something that is made by the ma the same manufacturer but long long gone but anyway let's lift it up again so as you can see we've got oh man it's like a swiss army knife and on top we've got the nixie tube which uh i'm probably gonna get told off for touching i reckon uh oh yeah it's gonna oxidize the glass or something but let's pop it out actually so this F90578A is a reasonably common style of Nixie tube. If you look inside here, you'll notice there's loads of metal kind of wires that are sort of shaped like numbers. Well, I say sort of, they are shaped like numbers. So this is a vacuum tube. So what happens is the anode, which is the uh, kind of grid at the um, front, you kind of charge that with about 170 volts through one of these pins. It's pin two, I think. And then each of these numbers are actually cathodes. So what you do is you send like one of those numbers which are allocated to one of these pins to ground and that will complete a connection causing the anode to charge and run through to the, um, the number that you selected and which makes the number glow in that orange color. And when you want to change the number on the display, all you do is change which one you want to go to ground and it creates a really cool kick-ass display. I have to be honest, I haven't actually experimented much with Nixie tubes. I've only got one and I only kind of messed around with it a little bit. But now I've got this, I'm really quite interested. After I finish a project, which will be up soon, on these beautiful Russian VFD tubes, which I've actually got about 100 of them, and uh, yeah, you'll see what's happening there. But um, I'll probably look at these beautiful things. Let's pop this beast back in. Oh yeah. 
So it looks like there's two boards per Nixie tube. Uh, I guess these transistors, these silver things, are actually uh, sending the different numbers to ground. So it makes uh, it chooses the number it's required to be on there. But it's really damn nice and really swish. So show you them in all their glory instead of being behind this um, sad, sorry little iodine coloured uh, screen. Ooh. So now I've got the four Nixie boards lifted up. I can't actually get the plus and minus one up because it's not like this. It's kind of drilled in and it's running on a relay back here. But yeah, let's just turn it on and have a little close look at these beauties in action. Oh yeah. So you can see in there the actual numbers are a different height inside the Nixie tubes, which is awesome. I wonder why three's at the front and one's at the back. But as you can see, the numbers are all running up, having them just running off, going crazy in there. Oh yeah. So I've just turned the light off to get a nice view. Oh, it's so cool. Do not raise board when power is on. Yeah, well, uh, as you can see, I've just gone and done that. Oops. So if you're interested in Nixie tubes, there's like loads of like Nixie tube clock kits and stuff that you can buy. You can even buy already assembled new Nixie tube clocks. You should check them out. Just type in Nixie tube clock on Google because they are really quite an attractive like display. And I was thinking of ways of actually building these kind of displays into the Game Boy Mega Machine, but I decided to maybe stick with these, which we'll be doing and talking about these somewhat in the future. Anyway, this is just a short one because I'm spending most of my time kind of like um, building uh, the Game Boy Mega Machine and other projects, which I am actually talking about quite a lot on my Patreon. So if you want to see frequent like vlogs and stuff about the Game Boy Mega Machine and uh, numerous other projects that I'm working on at the minute, there's um, a lot going on over at my Patreon, so go and check that out. And needless to say, Patreon kind of supports like the Game Boy Mega Machine because, as you can see, it's um, it's probably not going to be cheap to finish. <laughs> and yeah, I've been looking at my local computer. Don't be scared to try it unless it's high voltage. Then maybe be pretty careful and maybe be scared to try it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. <laughs>